So my first introduction to all this pain and all this wisdom that changed me was when I went from Vista County Jail in ADSEG to CJ, which is downtown, and they transferred me to ADSEG on my way to the penitentiary. I was in ADSEG from a riot with the Southsiders that just went bad, and every white boy that was in this riot fell in ADSEG with me. Now, I was getting transferred to the penitentiary, and I was alone. I had been alone in ADSEG for seven months. I only had a water bag and some magazines, and when, I, when anyone came to visit me, I was handcuffed to a table, and I saw them through glass. So I knew I was about to do 10 years, 10 years. I had never been to prison, 10 years hanging over my head. And what I saw once I got to ADSEG was, I have to strengthen myself. I have to strengthen myself or I'm gonna die. I'm gonna run myself in mentally before physically if I don't strengthen myself. And the way we do this, when the pain is just, when the pain is unbearable, when you've reached your threshold and you can't take one more second, that's where the level up begins. This is where we have to choose personal growth over vices. The problem I saw right when I got to CJ downtown is other inmates, they were choosing the vices instead of the growth. I saw some people doing both. So one of the guys, he was going to the, a level four yard. He was looking at 25 years. It was Frosty from uh, Ivy Rascals. And this dude was down as fuck. Big old white boy who was a Southsider. I told you before about him. He had snowmen tatted all over him. Uh, rascals right here, Imperial right here. And he was just blasted up. He had been to the pen before. We would talk. There was a lot of PCs in AdSeg, so he would tell me, hey man, don't talk to nobody else but me and Brown. Brown was from Logan. He had just done 11 years in the shoe and he was getting released. He was coming home after 11 years in the fucking shoe. I learned a lot from both these guys. Both these guys taught me a lot with their actions and their words. Frosty, he was torn between drinking that wine he was making in his cell and just massacring burpees all night. Just I just hear him above me. This guy's 260 and he's on the cell above me and he's racking burpees all night, just racking them and hammered. He didn't give a fuck. He didn't give a fuck about a wine write up. He didn't give a fuck about getting in trouble. He just got 25 fucking years, 25 fucking years. He was like 24 years old. So anyways, between him seeing that he was choosing both, he was working on personal growth, but for the wrong reason. His personal growth working out and trying to better, better himself was shifted in the wrong way. Because during that, his self-talk, he told me, was that he needs to strengthen himself to a fucking level of wind and a level of strength that nobody can fuck with him because he's going to the four yard and it's gonna be fucking savage. Four yards are savage. It's gonna be fucking savage and he wants to be ready for the fucking war. And the thing is, is this is the wrong reason. Our fucking purpose for what we're after is more important than the destination. So my purpose is to fucking strengthen my self-talk, to become more loving, to become a better person and understand that what I give is what I get. And the level of personal growth depends on bringing the subconscious conscious and knowing that we're creating this. So the biggest thing was that he was drinking and working on personal growth, but his, his intent was wrong. So he had some, he, he was just caught in the middle. He's gonna learn later. But then Brown, Brown had done 11 years in the shoe and he had the correct intent, he got it. He told me all the right stuff. He said, Wes, you're gonna go through a lot. You need to change a lot. You need to get out and be a better man. He had been through so much pain and this was, this was evident just in his character, in his demeanor, in everything. They told me I was about to go hit the yard at Donovan and this was the four yard at Donovan reception. And then we were about to, from there, I had so many points that I was gonna go to Sentinella or Calipat. And now this is freaking me out because I'd never been to the fucking pen. So as I'm fucking going through all this, I'm just learning, I'm just seeking within. I'm just fucking saturating myself with that pain and just in tears, just reading anything I can. And the fucking, the takeaway I got was that adversity, as a fucking rule, prosperity hides genius and adversity will reveal it. Adversity will reveal genius to yourself. Right now I'm going through the most pain I've felt since I've been out of prison. The most pain I've felt. And I have the most fucking level the highest level of reflection, I, I feel great because I'm sticking to my process. Run to that personal growth, run to it. 
Run to that personal growth. Do not think vices are gonna solve your problem. It's gonna be a temporary fix and then you're gonna feel doubled down. You guys, I want the best for you. This is what works. The hardest route is what will fucking strengthen us for our hardest days. Life is preparation. Life is preparation. Prepare yourself daily for these impossible days. I'm having an impossible day, but guess what? I'm proud that I'm handling it in a fucking way that is just gonna push me to who I can become. Life is happening for me. Even though it's painful right now, I know these changes that are taking place are for a reason, to shape who I'm gonna become in the future and make sure I walk the path for me. I don't want you guys to have to go to the penitentiary to learn these fucking tactics, so I'm passing them on. You don't have to learn the pain I've learned. I know you have pain. Your pain and my pain, they're all the same. You don't feel any different at your lowest point where you just feel like dying, like you feel like you can't go on, you feel like everything's fuck, fucked and your perception of life is screwed and you don't even believe in anything. I've been there. You can only get yourself out of that from work, from the process that instills strength in you. Self-love is only created through self-investment. When we invest in ourselves, we build ourselves. When we build ourselves, we see the best in everybody else. Seek to see the best in everyone else and smile, give good energy. Be stern with your motherfucking self. Create that motherfucker and then give him away. Give him away in a positive way. Kind to others. Stern with self. This is how we operate. I know you guys got it. I know you can overtake it because I was worse. Because I was worse. I want you today to push yourself, to get up earlier, to train harder, to eat more fucking, just more strict, starve a little bit, barely make it to your next meal, but get enough protein in, follow your macros, research macros, fucking dive into everything that you know you should be doing. There's no time to waste. Shit goes bad really fucking quick. And all you need to know is the legacy you leave behind is who the fuck you are. The surest sign of wisdom is to see the miraculous in the common, and I see it in everybody. I get angry sometimes, I get frustrated. That's my big change. My big takeaway from this is my reaction. I can soften it. I can still stay hard, stay hard but I can soften it. There's a perfect line that I need to walk, and my conscience guides me from that. If you listen to your conscience, you can walk the line flawlessly. It's telling you, right away, right after you fuck up, apologize to that person. Right when you fuck up on your diet. No more of that. You're being guided. You're being guided. Just like Brown in the fucking in ad said guided me. Just like watching Frosty guided me. Just like watching all the bullshit in the penitentiary showed me who I didn't want to be when I came out. So I had to have this discipline. Had to have this strength. Since I spoke the fuck up and I told everyone who I'm going to be when I get out. I told them. I told them I'm never quitting. So when I got up this morning with the most pain I've felt. In almost my whole fucking lifetime because I lost my dream. I lost my dream. And I woke up this morning and said, I'm going to get it back. I'm going to fucking get it back. I'm going to go work for it today. And then I'm going to go work for it fucking tomorrow. And then I'm going to go work for it to the next day because there's no fucking days off.